So when you're going in, do not underdress. Again, this is where preparation can come in handy. You can ask a secretary. You can ask somebody you know. Say, hey, what uh, what's pr- appropriate attire? You know, you can look at again knowing the managers. What do they wear? Do they wear suits on a daily basis? Do they wear business casual? Try and get a feel for this, but do not underdress. Try and dress equal to or even one step above, not more than one step above, right? We don't we don't need to go the whole nine yards if we're interviewing at a, a job that would require khakis and a polo shirt. We don't need to go with a, a three piece suit or a tuxedo or anything like that. Let's not get let's not get wild and crazy here. But really, if it's a if it's a business setting, guys, suit, white shirt, tie, dress shoes, no sneakers, belt, leather, have it match your shoes, nothing crazy. So for those of you who need to show up in a suit and a tie and a dress shirt and dress shoes, who don't wear those things on a regular basis, I cannot emphasize enough. You need to get comfortable wearing this attire so you don't look completely out of place and completely awkward because it's your first time wearing a suit and it's to get a job that actually matters. So this is what I did. I didn't wear a suit to work. I didn't wear a suit during college. So I went to the thrift shop. I got some suit jackets. I wore those suit jackets. Yeah, sometimes I wore them with jeans. Sometimes I wore them to church. That was actually where I where I got a lot of my wear in. I wore dress slacks. I wore a button-up shirt. Sometimes I'd wear a tie. Sometimes not. Not much of a tie guy. Another conversation for another time. And then the jacket over top. You need to be comfortable in it because there's etiquette with all of these things. For example, when you stand with a suit jacket or a sport coat or a blazer, right, you must button the top button. If it has three buttons, top or middle. And then when you sit down, the buttons are unbuttoned. But when you are in the interview setting, you know, walk in the room, obviously standing position, shake hands, you will then likely sit down. At that point in time, if you're not used to unbuttoning the button on your suit jacket, you're going to look incredibly awkward. It's not going to feel right. It's not comfortable. But if you do not wear that attire beforehand and become halfway comfortable in it, you're going to feel and look awkward during the interview. Save yourself the embarrassment. Look awkward in public where it doesn't matter. And I mentioned that I went to the thrift shop to get a couple of sport coats so I could wear them, break them in. And I had a cheap $99 suit separate, meaning it cost me 99 bucks to get a jacket and a pair of dress slacks. I supplied my own white shirt and I, uh, I wore a tie. Looked good. Brought my own shoes. One of the funny things that I think is I actually had more than one element from a thrift shop in all of my interviews. Some were entirely from a thrift shop. Shoes, pants, shirt, jacket, the whole works, which I think is kind of funny because I uh, I likely spent less than 20 bucks on a full, well-put-together um, appearance. And how I kind of got away with that is, one, I made sure that they were genuinely nice clothes. They didn't have holes in them, and they fit me well. This is really, really important because I'm going to throw out a crazy statistic. I don't remember the details, but it said that in-person interviews are actually a poor indicator of whether or not someone is going to be a good fit for the job, if they're, if they're going to be successful. And people who generally do better in interviews are people who are taller, confident, and well-dressed, which again, has no reflection on how they will actually do the job. But just know that being well-dressed and having clothes that fit well will carry you farther in the interview process. 